talk about. Now this morning, our topic is be a life giver. Very simple. Be a life giver. Tell the person beside you, be a life giver. Now, what that means is something that we're gonna study. We're gonna I read God's word and it's always a blessing whenever we study God's word. My prayer is that you would have that passion. That whenever you study God's word, it's not to make you fall asleep. You know, but it's really for you to be encouraged, be rebuked, be sanctified through His Word. And before we dive in, why don't we just pray and offer this time to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for a brand new day that you've given us, Lord. Indeed, Lord, life, a new day to live, such a blessing of God. And even to come together and worship you and sing songs and declare your word, Lord, freely is something that sometimes we take for granted, Lord God. We pray that you would bless this time. May you speak your word, Lord God. We, we pray, I pray, that it would not be me delivering your word, Lord God, but it's the Holy Spirit who is our teacher that would work in our hearts, in our minds, Lord God. But truly, Lord God, there would be transformation in us. We submit ourselves to you. I submit myself to you, Lord God. This is our prayer. All God's people will say, Amen. Amen. And this morning, we're going to very first day. And in verse 12, we'll read until 26. But in verse 12, and 22, it says there, you have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not commit murder. This is what you've heard. This is what you've been told. This, this is what you have been taught. Okay? You shall not commit murder. Okay? And whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. But he goes on, whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fire of hell. If we're going to summarize and make some bullet points on this, it's very easy. Three very simple statements that we can derive from our passage. Okay? First is, don't, don't murder. Second is, don't murder in. Okay? But he goes on. Third, don't cause others to commit murder. Three very simple things. And of course, when you say, you know, do not murder, that's the very first thing. He got it from the Old Testament. This is the sixth commandment. I hope you still remember we got through uh, Exodus, right? The book of Exodus. And we studied there. It says there, you shall not murder. And this is something that is, you know, very easy for us to understand. Right? Would you agree? Would you agree that, you know, when you go out of this place, you, you try to preach there outside, and you say, hey, you shall not murder. That's bad. That's, that's sinful. You would agree with me that people will not, you know, come up to you and say, no, 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 I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that murder is wrong. You won't hear that, most likely, right? Now, if you hear someone who says, Oh yeah, I believe you. Murder is right. We should kill. We should murder people. When you hear someone like that, you know, a piece of advice, you just run away from him, okay? But most of the people will not say, you know, murder is bad. They would agree with that. You know, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who is against that. As a matter of fact, this is the simplest way that we can come up with when we say, oh, that's 
a bad person and I'm a good person. Make sense? We're gonna say, oh, when you ask, are you a good person? Yeah, I am. Why? Because I haven't killed anyone. That's normally what people would say. I haven't murdered anyone, so no, I'm practically I'm good. We try to differentiate good and bad. Now I like to question you, ask you, how many of you here have killed, have murdered someone? Fair enough. Not, not a buck, okay? No, I've killed a cockroach. Uh, no, no, that, that doesn't count, okay? But someone. Not much of us, I guess. I think, we think, we make this as a rule, and this is what we do. I want you to listen to me. What we have done is, you know, that people, not, not them, okay, but someone there, okay, Th those people are bad. And so what we do, we draw a line around them and we stay back and you know, we're, we're outside the line. So those people inside of that line, those are bad people. Those are bad people. That's what we do. Oh, I, I'm not inside that line. I'm good. I'm okay. What Jesus Christ has done here, he makes that line so big that it includes you and me. He includes you and me. Say, are you sure you understand this? Are you sure you haven't committed that? This is what you know. This is what God says. That's what He says. And so that brings us to that point. Okay, I understand. Do not murder. That's good. I agree with that. Right? Does everyone agree with it? Do not murder. Or should I expand on it even more? Everyone agrees. Do not murder. Now, he goes on. Oh, by the way, Rabbi Zacharias said why this is, you know, why murder is bad. He says, in Genesis chapter 9, which is, this is the very first crime committed, okay? Um, murder is called the ultimate attack upon the image of God. That is what murder is. You know, you have violated the image of God, so if you violate the image of God in someone else, or you violate it in myself, which is, what? Suicide, right? It is the ultimate act of lack of faith and without faith. It is impossible to be That's exactly why this is something that is so serious. And then he says there, do not murder. Let me go further. Do not murder in your heart. Because a lot of us might think, you know, we're just thinking of the actual healing of other people. He says there, but I say to you, Jesus says, you know, look at my authority. That's what he's saying. That everyone who is, what? Who hurts? Who slaps? Who kills? No. He says there, who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, you shall be guilty. Now that explains why Jesus makes it so big, that kind of circle. So I don't know about you. I have been angry, the wrong things. I have been guilty of saying things 
And that is a reminder for all of us. That is a reminder. Jesus is saying, you know, when we are angry, when we when there is contempt towards others, when we regard others as worthless, I am that is murder in the sight of God. That is murder in the sight of God. That is murder in our hearts. The problem with us is we are so consumed with the outward appearance. Oh, how people would view us. We are so enamored with the standards of this world. That's the problem with us. And we think that that standard, okay, we'll put that in a Christian context and that's okay. Jesus Christ saying, no, 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 no. That's not the holiness of God. That's not the righteousness of God. That's not the standard in the heart of the law. Why God gave the law. As a matter of fact, let me just, you know, C.S. Lewis mentioned about this is like a sledgehammer being hit by a sledgehammer in our face. Just for us to be able to understand what, you know, the weight of this. Before what we're reading, I hope you still remember the verses before uh, what our passages are, okay? In verse 9, verses 19 and 20, this is what Jesus Christ said before he mentioned this. He says, Therefore, whoever relaxes one of these commandments, whoever that plays these things that I'm going to teach you, that's what he's saying. You're seeing how serious this is before God? He's saying, hey, this is serious. If you think that God, if you are accountable to God, then you have to pay attention to this. That's what he's saying. If whoever relaxes one of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. We cannot say, oh, I'm just hot-tempered. Eh, you know, talaga kasi kung ako eh. Okay lang yun. We try to justify things. Do we? We cannot do that. If it's, here's the thing, if it's serious with God, if God takes it seriously, then you and I, this church, our families, our marriages, need to take it seriously as well. If you are a, a disciple of Jesus Christ, if you're saying you're legit, you have to take it seriously. Why? Because God takes it seriously. We cannot be like the scribes and the Pharisees, just like that. It says there, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. If there is a crime committed, what normally you'll see a yellow tape in it, right? Huh? The scene of the crime, the scene of the crime, and how many of you know so uh, see of the crowd? Is it gas and gas? I don't know. Do we still have that? Do we still have that right now running? Okay. But what he's saying here is that there is this street of the uh, crime uh, scene. Okay, crime scene where these things happen. Let's bring it closer to us so that we would understand. Because probably sometimes we think, oh, hey, that's for someone else. That's for the person beside me. Uh, 
you're included here. The very first place where we see this happening is how many of you drivers? Huh? Huh? Probably you're not like those two at the bottom, okay? But but you, you get the point, right? You know, behind the wheel, someone cuts you. You say, toot, 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 toot. Yeah, what? what comes out of our mouth? How do we respond? Do we say, oh, I'm gonna show you how, you know, how we drive in the Philippines. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you who's the boss here. And then after some time, you still, you know, you still have that anger. You get old, you know, that driver there, you know. You know, if I see him, you know, I, I, I memorize his plate number, you know. That's murder. It's a scene of the crime behind the wheels. Not, not just in the car. Where else? Let's bring closer to home. Closer to home. You know, probably your house is something like this. Can I tell you something? Sometimes we have a beautiful place to live, but it's not really a home. Because there's murder happening left and right. We kill. Slaughter with our the way we deal with things, you know, husband and wife, because of misunderstanding, because of jealousy, sibling rivalries. You know, I met a lot of people, families breaking. Why? Because of manner. Why? Because of, you know, people are. Trying to find right in your wrong. What Brother Romeo mentioned, husband and wife, is a jealousy. You know, children and parents. Why? Because they get exasperated. You know, if you for a child, you're, you have that kind of relationship and real feeling for your parent. You might not understand it right now, but believe me, they love you. Sometimes we think, oh, they're so strict. They're unreasonable. They're so out of date, you know, old school. We have that kind of rebellious heart. Or the, probably the parents are so demanding of their kids. So hard. They compare kids. Why can't you be just like this person? Why, why can't you be just like your brother, your sister? You know, in those days, what happens? That built in and we ultimately murder each other at home. You know, be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. Because that kills. That kills. You know, um, one reminder that I will place here is, you know, this can be learned. If you are so used to, you know, saying, you know, those demeaning words, you know, critical words. When we say, oh, wala ka kwenta. We can also learn to say, 
words that build us up. We can learn that. We can practice that. And along the way, that becomes our new nature. Because we already have Christ. We already have the Holy Spirit within you. That you learn how to praise your wife, your husband. Instead of praising, it's so so unsocial, you know. It's a true love. Your opponents hurt. Probably you don't know that. Do you know that? Your opponents hurt. Your foes has to be edified. If it's not, it's not helpful. Don't, don't post it. If it's not uplifting, don't post it. The problem is with us. One time we're gonna post, oh Lord, God is good. He's so good to me. I'm so blessed, feeling blessed with the emotion. And then the following day, oh I hate this. He left me and did this and that. Huh? What, 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 did, what are you thinking of? You know? Is that something that would bless other people? Is that something that would bring life? We're talking about be a life giver. Or is that something that would suck life out? You know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9, it says there, Do not be eager in your heart to be angry, for anger resides in the bosom of fools. Now, do you want to be full? I hope not. Okay? Those who who get angry easily. What he's saying there is the truth is you are a fool in the sight of God. I'm not saying that to you, but God is saying that to you. Don't be eager in your heart to be angry. And what it's telling us here, ultimately, oh, look at this. What is that? It's a scene of the crime. Probably I'm already murdered right now. No. But the truth is this. You know, I, I, I feel bad, you know why? Because we receive, we are recipients of God's grace. We don't deserve it. That's what we preach on, right? And yet, we are the most critical. We're so hard. With other people. You just receive it like everyone else. We have murdered other people. Not a lot of us think about it, but um, there's a lot of people in the church who has not settled their grievances with their brother or sister. It's a reality. The longer that I'm in the ministry, the, the more I see this as a reality. And that's exactly why God takes this seriously. Because this cannot happen in his house. This cannot happen in his house. And what, what happens is, oh yeah, you know Jeff, I, I've forgiven him, really. But I don't want to see him. I don't want to see his face. Or, uh, okay, I've forgiven him, 
but okay, I'll sit here and he sits over there, you know, there, outside the church. That's what happens to us. This cannot be. You know, if we, the church, you know, the body of Christ, have hate towards another child, then we are first violating the image of God. Hear me out. When you have this grievance or it's an unsettled issue with someone else, you're violating the image of God. We are putting shame in the name of Christ. We're committing murder in our hearts. Are you still with me? This is so unpopular. You know, what we want is, oh, we go to church, we feel good. You know, brothers and sisters, my role, the role of the preacher is not to entertain us. Our role is to study God's Word faithfully. That's our role. Because only when we study it faithfully, the Holy Spirit transforms us, edifies us, brings us from glory to glory to glory. And ultimately, we get to see, you know, people, when they look at us, they see Christ in us. We shine. We become soft, just as we study it. You know, it's time for the body of Christ to live out and be life givers than life takers or murderers. You know, in James chapter 1, verses 19 to 20, can we read it all together? One, two, three, go. This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be We are to what? We can hear. The problem with us is people are still explaining and we're already talking. But no, don't say that to me. God gave us two ears right? so we can start listening. First, listening more. How many of us needs this? You know, we need this. We need to start to listen more. Quick to hear. Slow to speak. When we say things that are deadly, you cannot take it back. You cannot take it back. The damage has been done. You know, you can apologize. It's good if you apologize if we ask for forgiveness. But you've already heard the person. And then it says there in verse 20, you know, the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Yes, we have been saved, but where's the righteousness of God in our lives? First John 3.15, it says that everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. You can't be any clearer than that. And you know, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We cannot hate our brother and say we are followers of us. Revelation 21 verse 8 says there, but for the cowardly and the unbelieving and abominable, you know, look at these, these sinners, the types of sinners that we're talking about here. And then you come up with murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers, idolaters and liars. All of them, one category, there will be in the lake that burns with fire. The brimstone, which is the second heaven. But 
brothers and sisters, we are to look at God's Word. Seriously. Seriously. All of a sudden, we, we see, you know, that we committed murdering from our hearts. But he moves on. Do not murder. What? Do not murder in your heart. And then he says, do not. Oh, well, that's ultimately everything is in our hearts. But don't cause others to murder commitment. You know, you look at this in verse 21 and 22, he talks about, okay, do not murder. Two verses. The rest of the verses, if you're faithful to it, he's focusing, he's turning around, and now he's saying, okay, if others commit murder because of you, if others commit murder because of you, what are you supposed to do? He says, there, therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, you know, I'm thinking, I'm coming from the east side of Toronto, right? I'm coming here, gonna worship God, gonna bring offerings to God, and the Holy Spirit brings something in my heart. That you're coming here, and your brother, remember that your brother has something against you? You say, if God brings that in your heart, what you're supposed to do? Don't think about coming here and worshiping God. Leave your offering. Go to your brother. Settle your brother. But, but Lord, I, I came all the way here. It's so far. And what, what am I supposed to do? I, I cannot worship a happy birthday. Yeah, because that's more important with our Father in heaven. It's not enough that you don't have... Here's what we're saying. Listen to me. And sometimes you and I call it this. Oh, it's not my problem. Siya galit sa akin eh. Problema niya na yun. Right? Oh Lord, it's not my problem. He's the one who did this. Or she's the one who said this. It's not my problem now. God says no. It's still your problem. It's still your problem. You know, brothers and sisters, as I've been contemplating this in my life, I said that I cannot preach this sermon. This is true to me. We cannot say, oh yeah, that's what God says. And we have not settled with someone who's against us. No, God has convicted me. You no, know, initially we tried. I didn't do anything. I didn't say anything. I didn't commit murder. I says no. You're my disciple, right? It's Lord. You're a authentic believer, right? It's Lord. Then do what I say. And when God did this to me, I, I had to reach out to someone who was hurt and ask for forgiveness. Why? Because we belong to Christ. That's what he says. If they don't accept, they're okay. You do what you can do. Amen. You reach out. 
you apologize. You may not have said anything wrong. But if you cross your brother, your sister, to commit murder, we are to respond in this way. Go. Settle it. Why was that more important to me? Bill says they're big friends quickly. Don't delay. Don't delay. This would be normal say, it's not my fault. He doesn't like me. You know. We have to stop justifying and start obeying. Amen. Stop justifying things and start obeying Him. You know why? Because there is a lot of things. When we talk about legit, remember, be real. Break free. God wants to break you free from this bondage. God wants to let you be free. God is talking to you. You know, allow Him. I'm sure. I'm sure. God has brought someone in your heart. In my advice to you as a brother of Christ, obey. Obey. Then of course, we talk about, you know, be a life giver. Be a life giver means, you know, we came up with this acrostic. God's sovereignty, immediate attention, Voluntary accountability, edifying words, reliance on the Holy Spirit. This is how you and I can be a life Okay? Let me just go through it. And it's all anchored on the very first one. Because the other things, I, V, E, R, that's all dependent on if you know that God is sovereign. If you think that God is not sovereign, then, you know, he, 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 the other things wouldn't follow. And so, we start there first with God's sovereignty. This is a very beautiful picture. A story of David, King David, in 2 Samuel. And this is in the moment when there was, uh, they, they were having problems with the family, his son wanted to kill him, at the same time there is this, um, you know, people who's against him, so, and, and let's read the, the, um, the passage, it says there, when King David came to Bahur, behold there came out from there a man of the family of the house of Saul, okay, now Saul was the former king, trying to kill David, okay? And whose name was Shimei, the son of Ger. He came out cursing continually as he came. You know, he was cursing him. And he threw stones at David and at, the, uh, at all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were with his uh, right hand and his left. It all begins with knowing and believing that God is sovereign. Look at this. He's the king. He's the king. He has authority. He has power. He has this mighty man with him. Okay? All of a sudden, someone comes out cursing him. Who's a nobody? In our minds, it's like, oh, this is nobody. I'm the king here, right? I deserve respect. I deserve, you know, your, your obedience. He's not just 
cursing him. He's throwing stones at him. If that is you, how would you respond? Hindi ba ako kilala That's what we think. That's our normal reaction. Who does he think he is? What happened? Verse 9. Then Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why would this dead dog curse my lord and king? Then you have those people around you. Hey, you don't deserve to be treated that way. Let me go over now and cut off his head. You don't have to do anything. I'll do it for you. Free of charge. I'll do the demolition job. And but the king said, look at look at the heart of David. What have I to do with you, O son of Zerah? If he curses, and if the Lord has told him, curse David, then who shall say, you know, why have you done so? What is he saying? But if God allows this, then who am I to challenge him? Who am I to tell him to stop? Sometimes we think, oh, that's wrong. I'll make sure. I'm going to teach him a lesson. That's how we think. The heart of David here tells us, well, God allowed us. Why would I take this against this man? You see the difference? Oh, someone disrespects you. Lord, you know, you are sovereign. Nothing escapes you. You allow things to happen. You are still in control. And you know, brothers and sisters, this is something that is so crucial in our lives. This is one of the things that I'm going to talk about with the singles. You have to understand who God is. Only until we understand that God is sovereign, that God reigns, God sits in the throne, and even whatever happens there, He's not dethroned, He doesn't lose His power, then you start to trust. You start to relax and know that you know, God is sovereign. It says there, then David's said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son came out uh, from me, seeks my life. How much more now is Benjamin? Let him alone. Let him curse, for the Lord has told him. Perhaps the Lord will look on my affliction and return good to me instead of his curse. You know, when I see this, I pray that the Lord would allow me to have the kind of heart that David has. That all of us would have that kind of heart. Towards each other. We learn from David that, you know, we, we are to let go of our pride. Let me repeat that. Let go of your pride. So what? If you get disrespected. So what? Whenever we counsel couples, one of the things that we mention is, you know, your husband or your wife, they're more important for you. They're more valuable than you proving that you are right. Than you proving that you know more. And even with other people. 
dating, wrong things about you, they have been fed with wrong information. That's what they know. So, just like David says there, perhaps the Lord will know what my affliction and return good to me. What's he saying? Okay, he doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. Perhaps the Lord will use this. You know, that's what Romans 8, 28 is saying. It's a reality. You know, all things work together for good, for those who love for all, for the And we have to understand, we cannot just say those things. We just don't, oh, okay, this is the memory verse. No, we have to live it out. Live it out. God is on the throne no matter what. Amen? No matter what. And this is the foundation of it. Now let's go through it, the, uh, the other things, very quickly. Immediate attention. You know how you can be a life giver to someone else? You have to act on it immediately. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 to 27 says, Be angry, and yet do not sin. Now, the anger here is the righteous anger. This is not the kind of anger that you're against with your brother. Okay? And that's totally different topic altogether. We can preach about that. But it says that, and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your hand. Some of us try to let it brew and simmer. We like the aroma. We like, you know, I just, I just want to have this feeling. This anger for some more, uh, some more time. No, brothers and sisters. Deal with it. Don't deal with it. Can I tell you something? You may not have the chance to correct and send out things to those people. So as long as it is today, God has given you a day. Do it. Do it. You will not lose it. It's a matter of fact, you gain. When I share this with someone and they actually mended with each other, in their relationship got restored. You know, it's not just them who got blessed. I tell you, I was doubly blessed. I was crying. I was just to see how God moves. Now you want to experience the power of God, how God moves in your life until you obey. Until you obey. Don't, don't let it simmer. Give immediate attention. God is sovereign. What? The second is immediate attention. Now, of course, that's the check engine. If you see that on your car and you disregard it, most likely, probably that small problem can become bigger. It's the same thing with our lives. There's a reason why God wants us to deal with it quickly. Third is voluntary accountability. You know, brothers and sisters, it says there are Proverbs 15, 31, He who, whose ear listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. How many of you are in this small group? How many of you have an accountability? It doesn't matter. Sometimes you are in a small group, but you're not accountable to anyone. Even I myself am accountable to your leaders, to the leaders in, in East, with Pastor Benji. I have to be. Why? 
because I need someone who would tell me what's the right thing to do, correct me if I'm wrong, check how I think. I need that. All of us need that. We all need encouragement from someone else. And only when we're open, but it's not needed at the time. Timing is crucial. Husband and wives know that, right? Timing is crucial. But only such a word that's good edification according to the need of the moment so that it's not just the two of you, it's not just you know the person that you're talking to, but it will give grace to those who hear. Other people are affected by it. Practice. Practice it. Are you gonna practice it? Good. 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 Are you going to practice it? Yes. By God's grace, we are to practice it. If it's serious with God, it has to be serious with us. Words can destroy, but it can also build people up. So rather, instead of being a murderer, be a life giver. Question for us. When was the last time you encouraged others? If you cannot remember, start. Start looking at it. And you'll be amazed how people will be attracted to you. Because you don't suck life from them. They get edified with, with their with You'll be amazed how your relationships will be transformed. Amen? And of course, the last thing is, you know, you cannot do this without the power of the Holy Spirit. You can try all you want. But this is fruit. This is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You need to first have the Holy Spirit in your life. Why? Because Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 29, it gives that contrast. If you have the Holy Spirit, this is the fruit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, this is the fruit of the flesh. He's saying here, you know what you have? You have love. You have love? Do you have joy? Do you have peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness? Self-control. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not, this is the contrast of it. Are you boastful? Challenging one another. Envying one another. You know, in Him, you will know you also, after listening to the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, it starts if you get saved. You have the Holy Spirit at the time when you get saved. After listening to the truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed with it. The Holy Spirit sealed you. It's like a stamp. This belongs to me. This is my child. If you have that stamp, if you are sealed, you have the Holy Spirit. And don't justify things. No, oh, I'm just human. No. You have the Holy Spirit. Left in ourselves, we cannot do it. But if you have the Holy Spirit, then that is the fruit of it. 
you got to see that come in our lives. Come. I want us to end with this video. I want you to watch that video. It's a very powerful video, but you might miss that powerful and heart-touching action. Let's go ahead and watch. This is a video of a serial killer. Okay? His name is Gary Ridgeway. Let's go ahead and watch him. You are nobody. You are an animal. These are relatives of victims of the Green River Killer. May God have mercy on your pathetic soul because the rest of us who know the truth about you won't. The most prolific serial murderer America has ever known. The one thing that I want you to know, I was that daughter at home, waiting for my mom to come home. Whose 19 year reign of terror left the area surrounding Seattle littered with corpses. I don't wish for him to die. I wish for him to have a long, suffering, cruel death. So, after having killed maybe 60 girls from 82 to 85, from 85 to when he was caught in 2001, uh, the number of victims was more like 10. Mr. Ridgeway, how do you plead to the charge of aggravated murder, first degree, as charged in count one? Guilty. In 2003, Gary Ridgway made his plea to the 48 charges of murder that investigators could conclusively tie him to. I didn't plead to the charge of aggravated murder in the first degree as charged in count five guilty. Before Ridgway was led away, Judge Richard Jones instructed him to face the victim's families. There's a tremendous amount of emotion that these family members wanted to pour out for Gary Ridgway to hear. I can only hope someone gets the opportunity to choke you unconscious so you can live through the horror that you put our daughters, our sisters, our mothers through. The pain would not go away, but brought them closer. The one thing that I want you to ever try to know, I was that daughter at home, waiting for my mom to come home. I think for all of us, uh, as we brought the families up and introduced them, it was really emotional. I recall in the rules, Father, there are people here that hate you. I'm not one of them. I'm a very sympathetic, very compassionate individual. What God says to do, that's to forgive all. So you are forgiven, sir. sitting next to a person who's done the most inhumane things to other human beings and then 15 feet away is a person doing the most humane and merciful thing. I wanted him to look out, see the pain, see the anger, and see all the agony that he'd caused in his lifetime. I wanted him to take a visual image with him back to prison. So for the balance of his life, that would be the last public image that he had. You took from me my firstborn child, made her soul and the soul of the other 47 victims. Rest in peace. There are people here that hate you. I'm not one of them. What God says to do, and that's to forgive all. So you are forgiven, sir. You know, if you look at it, we have the right. We have the right. They have the right. Why? Because it's painful. But you know, brothers and sisters, what God showed me, 
is that there's, you know, we think there's only one murderer there. But there's a lot. They murdered him because probably he deserved it. But you see how emotionless he was. He only cried upon something that he doesn't deserve to receive. And that is forgiveness from the family, from the father, the one he knew. I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that's something that the guy said to is the most humane in person. It's not humane. Why? Because this is only a work of God in Him. Left to ourselves, we cannot do that. Left to ourselves, we will retaliate, we will not forgive. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 says, Be kind to one another. Tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Brothers and sisters, my appeal to you. You know, you and I just receive forgiveness from God. If we receive that forgiveness that we don't deserve, how much more can we give forgiveness to others? Colossians 3, 13 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, as His disciple, as someone who He chose and picked, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with hearts of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive. Any complaint you may have against one another, Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Let's bow our hands. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for the truth, the hard truth, Lord God. It's really hard to swallow, hard to obey. Brother, Lord, allow us to understand that you know things that we don't. Allow us, Lord God, to fully depend on you, Lord, in your sovereignty. Allow us, Lord God, to realize that there is freedom. If we don't forgive, Lord God, we are, we are like plagues to you in prison. And so you, you've called us, Lord God, to be life givers, Lord God, instead of murderers. To forgive, to love, to bear one another's burden. To forgive each other's fault. Lord God, we also realize that we we might have not murdered other people, but we are the cause that someone else is committing murder to their hearts. Would you forgive us, Lord Jesus? Would you please cleanse our hearts? Straighten our lives, Lord God. Purify us, Lord God, so that you will be glorified, so that people will get to look at our lives and see how gracious our God is. That when they look at our lives, Lord God, they will see how merciful our God is. Lord, help us not to fight against your Holy Spirit. Not to grieve your Holy Spirit, but rather submit, Lord. To obey. To allow you, Lord God, to work in our lives. If there are people, Lord God, that you brought into our hearts and minds, Lord God, 
Amen.